driver's seat. Evident, right? Said, all my sin rolled away Amen. because of you, O oh Jesus. Amen. Right? There's no reason that we should be sent here tonight with sin separate, separating us from the Lord Amen. when all we have to do is confess it. Amen. He's faithful and just to forgive us, as 1 John 1 9 says, right? If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive and cleanse and purify. Good. Roll that sin right on out of there. You're, you're right standing with Him. Amen. So, Father, we come to you tonight. We thank you for your opportunity to gather. We pray for those who will watch later or might tune in tonight, Lord God, that you would be with them. But speak to us tonight through your word, Lord, and we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to talk about having a renewed heart tonight, and we're going to talk about the results of having a renewed heart. And when we come to Christ, we get a heart transplant. Amen. Right? We get a heart transplant. I got a heart transplant. You got a heart transplant. We kind of go undergo a circumcision of the heart. When we come to Christ, we don't have the same old heart. Deuteronomy says that I'll remove that heart of stone and I'll give you a heart of flesh. And 17 years ago when I came to the Lord, I had a heart of stone. And the Lord gave me a heart of flesh. And it's up to me to tend to that heart. If I don't tend to my heart the way that I should, that heart will turn right back into a heart of stone. The heart will get callous for warned in Scripture. Be careful that your heart don't get callous. So we get this new heart and we need to tend to this new heart. It's like if you got a heart transplant... You need to take care of that new heart, right? Ephesians tells us in 4.18. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their heart. Due to the hardening of their heart. They being the unsaved, right? We used to be they. I used to be a they. I used to be one of those days that had a darkened heart and was ignorant to the things of the Lord. You used to be one of those days, right? Our hearts were hard. We were ignorant. We were separated from God. But then we got saved. 17 years ago, I got saved. Whenever you got saved, I'll remove that heart of stone and I'll give you a heart of flesh. You got a heart transplant. God removed that old heart of stone and he gave you a heart of flesh. And you have to maintain the proper life to preserve that heart. To keep that heart of flesh, a heart of flesh that's soft and, and, and that's not hardened and that's sensitive. And I want you to be thinking about that tonight. Am I living my life in a way that's keeping my heart right with the Lord? Because when the Lord starts convicting us of things in our life and we don't deal with it, we just keep on trucking the way we shouldn't be going, and that heart gets a little bit harder. And we, when we don't deal with those things, the heart gets a little bit harder. Pretty soon, man, you've got a hard heart. But with that renewed heart, you have assurance in God. See, I have assurance in God right now because i got that heart renewed, and, and i got that heart of flesh, and I, and I can trust in the Lord. Amen. Whatever you're going through tonight, you should be able to, to trust in the Lord. And Psalms tells us in 112, 7, they will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their hearts are secure. They will have no fear. In the end, they will look and triumph on their foes. Right? So when your heart's been renewed, you, you put your trust in the one who renewed it. And that's a freedom from fear. We don't have to live in constant fear of bad news. For instance, right now, for, for me, I've been, Turning Point's been around, it'll be 27 years this November. We got eight guys in the home. And if it gets any less, we won't, we won't have a home. After 26, almost 27 years, uh, we, won't have, we won't have a home to function. Right? But I can't fear. I got to trust the Lord. I got to trust that God's going to bring some in. He brings them, but they don't stay. He brought us two yesterday and two left today. <laughs> but I've never seen it like this. I've never had to trust the Lord this way, thinking, man, 27 years and that might be it. That, that, that thought has crossed my mind. But, man, I can't let that thing consume me. Yeah, it may cross my mind. I may think about that at times. And some of you are shaking your head saying, oh, no way. But I'm a realist. There's a season for everything. And as a, as a leader, I have to have a vision. I need the Lord for a vision of what the Lord wants to do. Right? Uh, it, it gives you something to be concerned about. But i got to trust the Lord. I can't let that put fear in me. I, I can't live in constant fear of bad news. we got to trust the Lord knowing that no matter what happens. That Romans 8.28 says, For everything works for the good of those who love the Lord. Amen. Everything works for the good. You can only be around to help people if they want to get help. If people don't want to get help, you can't help them. And it seems like the generation that we're in now and the world that we're in now, people don't want to get help. We had a guy leave today, I need a cigarette. <laughs> uh, man, you got more worries and things to deal with than a cigarette, brother. You're hooked on drugs. You're leaving over a cigarette? 
When I went into the men's home, some of you here went into the home, you give it all up when you go to the men's home. You give it all up. And you surrender it all. And if you do it, if you stick with it, you'll uh, you'll succeed. It's been 17 years for me and I've succeeded, right? Because I've tended to my heart. Amen. See, I know the Lord's changed my heart. Amen. So i got to trust Him. I know the Lord's changed my heart because I know I don't handle things the way I used to. I don't handle things the way I did five years ago. The Lord continually softens my heart, changes my heart, and in the process of renewing my mind, I know what the Lord's done in my life. Everyone knows me as Pastor Norm. There's a few people that know me as Norm from the streets, but I know me. That's right. The only one that knows me better than me is the Lord. Amen. And I know what the Lord's done in my life. I know the stuff that I used to do, right? And it's only because of the grace of God that I don't do it anymore. Amen. So I got to trust Him. No matter what, I have to walk out in the future or what path the Lord has for me or what he does do or what he doesn't do. I got to trust him. And the same goes for you. You got to trust him. Right? We have a sister in here who was trusting him for a job. She got two jobs. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. You got to trust him. And if you don't trust him, he don't, he, he don't come through for you because you ain't trusting him. Sometimes there's that little test he throws out there because uh, to get to the next level, you gotta you got to complete this level. Right? And some of us may be stuck on one level right now. God's trying to get us to the next level. we we got to trust Him. But with that renewed heart, we're going to have a love for His Word. And, the, and your heart will not stay renewed if you do not have a love for the Word of God. In Romans 7, 22, for in my inner being, I delight in God's law. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. When your heart changes, it is impossible for your mind to be renewed. And when that happens, you'll delight in God's uh, Word. In my inner being. Right? Your heart's got to have, your heart's got to be filled with the Word of God. It's got to be stored up in you, written in the tablet of your heart, the scripture says, right? You've got to have it in you. Because if you don't have it in you, you're going to respond with what's in you. And if the world's in you, and that's for the Christian that hasn't been in the Word like they should and all that, well, the world's going to be in them then, because we're out in that world every day. That's why it's so important to get the Word in you, to wash some of that world off, right? You should crave the Word. You should crave the Word. You should not be able to go a day without having your face buried in the Word of God. Even if it's just for a few scriptures, even if it's just for a chapter or two, a devotion, you should crave it. You should be something that draws you to it every single day of your life. And 1 Peter 2, 2 and 3 says, Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk, so that you may grow up in your salvation. Right? Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. So God's Word gives us life. It is life. It gives life. And it nourishes life. We can't live for Christ in the proper way if we don't have a desire for His Word. Crave pure spiritual milk so that you may grow up in your salvation. There's a lot of believers that haven't grown up. They come to the Lord in faith. They've accepted what Jesus Christ has done on the cross and they believe. But they're still immature. As Hebrews says, they're still in the bottle getting the milk, not solid food, because they haven't grown up in their salvation. You ain't going to grow up unless you crave it, right? You're not going to grow up unless you have a hunger for it. You have a thirst for it. And then as you get that word in you, you start maturing. It starts renewing your mind. It starts continuing to renew your heart and deal with your heart and keep your heart from getting hardened. And you grow up and you grow into that person that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you to be. He just didn't die on the cross for us to be mediocre Christians. There was enough mediocre Christians walking this planet, folks. There's enough. We don't need to be one of them. We need to set the example, right? Amen. And hey, there's room for improvement and all of us starting with me. So I'm not picking on anybody tonight. But we all need to improve. We all need to take it to the next level. We all need to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Start right here. Psalms 119, he says, I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So when your heart gets renewed, you get the word in you, it helps It helps keep it renewed. It helps you from sinning against the Lord. Because when I got that word in me and I'm walking down the street and the Holy Spirit goes, hey, don't go there. Don't do this. That goes against God's word. God's word says this. The Holy Spirit will remind you of scripture. And you'll stop and say, well, well, if that word ain't in you, what's the Holy Spirit going to remind you of? What are you going to draw from? Go down to the versatile and don't put no money in the bank and tell me how much money you get out of it. <laughs> you ain't going to get nothing. And if you keep playing around, they'll probably keep your card. 
Right? you got to get the word down in you. That's what the Holy Spirit uses to convict us. That's what the Holy Spirit uses to guide us in God's will for our life. Keeps us lined up with the Lord. Because when that word's in you, you're only held accountable to what you know the scripture says. That's why it's important to read the word. So you can take, the Lord can take you so you can grow up in that salvation. And so if Philippians says, Paul says in Philippians, to so work that salvation out with fear and trembling. Because it's serious business. Serious business that we be in the word, right? And being in the word and having that heart renewed and doing all that, you're going to have a desire to be holy. Do you desire tonight to be holy? Something to be thinking about. Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. So a pure-hearted person is one whose motives are unmixed, whose thoughts are holy, and whose conscience is clean. Pure-hearted, not perfect, but a pure-hearted person, when they fall into sin, they'll repent, and that thing will get washed away like that song just said, right? And their conscience will be clean, right? That's because they have a desire for holiness. They understand, understand God's word. They understand the life that they're supposed to live. And they have a desire to live it out. They've got the word down in their heart. And I want you to think about it tonight. When's the last time you thought about being holy? When's the last time you thought about being righteous? When's the last time you thought about your actions and your motives, if they were holy, if they were righteous, if they were pleasing to the Lord? And that's, that, that's what we're supposed to be thinking about. We're supposed to come in here and I'm going to share some scripture with you. And that scripture is supposed to convict us and it's supposed to make us think about something. Amen. If you go to a church service and you hear a message, you don't leave there thinking about nothing, go find you another church. Because you're wasting your time. We're supposed to be thinking about how we can be better, right? When's the last time you thought about being holy? Colossians 3 1 says they have since then you have been raised with Christ <clears throat> set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God set your mind on things above not on earthly things right set your hearts on things above so when your hearts renewed you should live your life to please the Lord focus on things above too often our heart is set on worldly things our heart wants this and our heart wants that and our heart set on things down here, not things above. Our heart may be set on how do we please this flesh. When we should set our heart, as it said, on things above. Right? What's your focus on? What's your heart set on? What do you wish for? What do you pray for? What do you desire out of this life that you live here on this earth? Is it on things above? which would be God's will for your life, ours are on earthly things. Something to be thinking about tonight. Which brings us to a desire to seek God. If your heart's been renewed and you've kept your heart pure, you're going you're gonna to have a desire. Every day you're going to wake up and realize this is another day that I can draw closer to the Lord. Yeah, that's right. No matter, once again, we're not going to be perfect. We're going to fall into sin. Things are going to happen. But we make that thing right with the Lord because we have a desire we want to seek the Lord. We know that He's our everything. We know that everything good comes from above. We know that without Him, we can do nothing. But with Him, I can do all things through Christ. Amen. Who gives Amen. me strength. Amen. Right? Amen. Psalms 119.10 I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. And when you have a desire for holiness, this will be your attitude as well. See, God doesn't want part of your heart. I seek you with all. And that's the problem some of us might have. God might have part of our heart. He doesn't want to share our heart with anything. God requires all of it. He requires every nook and cranny of our heart. He said, don't let me stray from your commands. And I'm here to tell you tonight, folks, that if you don't seek him with all your heart, eventually you will stray. You'll stray from his commands. If you're not 100% in, in your relationship with the Lord, 100%. If you're 95% in, you will stray eventually. You've got to be 100% in in your relationship with Him. You've got to be fully committed. We've been talking about commitment on Sundays, the last few Sundays, what it means to be committed to the Lord, how being committed to Him puts us in right standing with Him. We talked about being committed with Him puts us in right standing with one another. We talked about it last Sunday, being committed uh, to Him. Makes the fellowship of believers a better fellowship. 
None of that comes without commitment. Renewed heart doesn't come without commitment. A renewed mind doesn't come without commitment. Without commitment, your heart will get hardened. I said it before, there's days I may wait, you know, that's why it says don't go to bed angry, you go to bed with the devil. And when you wake up, you wake up with a hardened heart. And it's your responsibility right there when you realize that you wake up and you're in that mood. Because we should be waking up with the joy of the Lord every morning, grateful for another day that wasn't promised to us, grateful that we're going to a place called heaven, right? We should be, I mean, it doesn't matter what you have in the bank or what bed you woke up on, you should be grateful if you're born again, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You got a lot to be grateful for. Amen. It's up to you to deal with that thing. Immediately. Psalms 119, 145. I call, I will. I'll call with all my heart. Answer me, Lord. I will obey your degrees. I call with all my heart. Answer me, Lord. I will obey your decrees. So when you pray, is it is it with your heart? Is your heart in it? I call with you with all my heart. Or are you calling on Him like just it's just a ritual? Or are you crying out to God with all your heart? We talked about it last Sunday. I implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. I beg you, I beg you to get saved, right? We should be begging people to come to Christ. Do you, when you cry out to God, is it with all your heart? Or are you just saying some prayer because it's some ritual? Oh, i got to pray if I want to stay in God's will. i got to pray today. Or are you crying out to Him with all your heart? When's the last time you wept before the Lord? And just wept and said, Lord God, I need you to move. And this, you know, this is what I need you to do, Lord. And just cried out with all your heart. Some of you may not have never done that. I would encourage you to get, get along with the Lord and, and let loose and cry out to the Lord with all your heart. He'll, he'll answer the cry. He'll answer it. He's waiting for it. He knows if you're coming to Him just with some false humility. He's, you know, he knows if you're coming to Him because you've got to do your Christian duty. He knows that when you open that Bible in the morning. He knows your heart better than you. He knows if you're just reading it because you have to or if you're reading it because you want to. He knows. And with that, we'll have a desire. As we kind of talked about it Sunday for salvation for others. When your heart gets renewed, your heart gets softened, and you, you have you, you have a desire for this holiness, you're seeking the Lord, you're crying out to, to the Lord, man, you have a desire to see people get saved. There should, I mean, there should be no other other thought in your mind but souls. He came for souls to save the lost. That was the mission, right? To save us. And he's left that mission and that great commission to us. To go to the ends of the earth, right? But Romans 10 1 says, brothers and sisters. My heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites that they may be saved. Now think about this. Once a persecutor of the church, this is Paul right here with a renewed heart, right? Once a persecutor of the church, this guy murdered Christians. This guy had papers in his hand on the road to Damascus when he came into an encounter with Jesus Christ and was knocked to the ground and blinded for three days. A person, he held the jackets of those who stoned Stephen. Man, he got his heart renewed. He had an encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus. And that heart of stone was ripped out and that heart of flesh was put in. And the once a persecutor of the church, brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God is for the Israelites that they may be saved. His heart changed toward other people since, uh, since he had an encounter with Jesus, right? Our hearts should change toward other people since we've had an encounter with Jesus. It doesn't matter how people treat us. It doesn't matter what they do. When you have an encounter with Jesus Christ, you, you don't allow them to, to, to filthy up your heart. You don't allow them to pollute your heart, right? You love it with a heart that... That heart of flesh, right? He tells us in Matthew 5, 44. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And when your heart is renewed and kept renewed and it's not hard or callous, you'll be able to walk that scripture out in your life. You'll be able to pray for those people who persecute you. And it won't change your love for them. No matter how they treat you, it won't change how you love them. Because you're going to love them like Jesus loves you. Amen. You'll be thinking heavenly things, right? Being obedient to Scripture. Not earthly things. Not how the flesh is going to respond. Not how the flesh is going to react. Not how the world responds. That's earthly. 
But heavenly, you're going you're gonna to respond with love no matter what they do. That's a person with a renewed heart. That's a person that's dealt with their heart and kept their heart renewed and, per, and preserved their heart, right? And with that, you have a love for the church. So you see people come to church and they'll come for a while and then once they get plugged in and you see once the Lord starts doing something in their life, man, they're sold out for the church. Man, they'll do anything for the church. I've seen it. I've seen people, I've seen guys come in the home and spend a year and get right with the Lord and, and, and I think of John Chacon. That guy goes to church service every service before their service and cleans the bathrooms and sweeps those little black bugs that are everywhere out of the deal every service. Sets the air conditioners and he just, that's what he does. And he loves doing it. He does it with a smile on his face. That's because his heart's been changed. I talk, had someone talk to me the other day about it and said, that guy used to walk around brawling like a zombie. Can't believe he's doing so great. They're all proud of him. Nico, yeah, Nick back there running the computer. Amen. Came in, you know, running the computer now, both both campuses, whole boat Raleigh. Yeah. 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 Let's get a little secret between me and you guys. Running that computer is probably the worst job in this church because he has to deal with me and my wife when we're upset. <laughs> <laughs> both of us on him. <laughs> the Lord brought the perfect person Amen. to deal with me and my wife. He's I've so never cool. seen Nico get Nick get nope. excited one time. Nope. He, he ministers to me yeah. in his humility and his patience. Yeah. It's just a, a blessing. Yeah. Me and my wife talk about it all the time. Yeah. What a blessing, man. We wish we had his temperament. So just so calm. He doesn't get excited. Yeah. We're over here killing each other. <laughs> Before you guys come, we're, we're going out of here. Because the computer didn't work, Nico's off. No, this is a calm voice. <laughs> so thank you, Nick. We appreciate yes. you, brother. Yeah. 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 So, two years ago, what? You've been in a transition how long? So he's he's been with Turning Point for two years then. He did a year in the home, and he, he's been a transition. So two and a half years almost. Yeah, so, so two and a half years ago, he was out on the streets all messed up. Right? 120 pounds. 120 pounds. Came in 120 pounds. And look at like Paul on the road to Damascus. <laughs> they came to Turning Point. Man, Solomon had an encounter with Jesus. Amen. Now he sat back there running the computer for the Lord. Amen. That's what it's all about, man. But Acts 4.32, all believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions were their own, but they shared everything they had. And it's not hard to spot the believers who are tending to their heart. It's not hard to spot them at all. You can tell those ones that are in the Word, who are praying, who are desiring to be holy. It's not hard to spot them because they have a love for the church. They have no problem committing their resources or anything to the church. They have no problem committing their time to the church. It's not hard to spot them, right? They'll use their spiritual gifts to build up the church. And one of the key things, and I'm not picking on anybody here, but one of the key things you know about them is they give to the church. Amen. Right? They give. Amen. They reach right down in here. And they pull it out and they give to God. Amen. What is God's? Right? Amen. Because they're sold out. And so many will do all that other stuff. And this ain't a tithing message. But they failed them to give God what's his. So all that other stuff that they do, there's that one thing that he said, test me in. Yeah, right. Test me in this, man. And when that heart is completely renewed and sold out for the Lord, boom, they pass the test. Amen. 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 But there's a possibility of a renewed heart becoming faithless. I've seen it. If it's not tended to. And that's why it's so important. That's why I, when I say faith, I mean they, people just lose the faith. People just lose their walk with the Lord. They once were on fire. We all know those people that were once on fire for the Lord. And where are they now? There's some empty seats in here tonight from folks that used to be on fire with, with the Lord. And where are they now? And it's so important that we self-examine ourselves before the Lord. It's so important that we come to the Lord. 
not just like we did uh, last Sunday when it was Communion Sunday and examined ourselves, but it's so important that we do it on a daily basis so that our heart don't even start. Do you want just a little bit of cancer or no cancer? No cancer, right? You don't even want that heart to start to get hard. You don't want that lung to start to get bad, right? You, you want to keep it right, right? Psalms 139, 23, Search me, O God, and know my heart, because we know he knows it. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there be any offense way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. So David sought the Lord right here to reveal to him any area of his heart that wasn't right. And it's important that we do that on a daily basis ourselves. Sometimes you might have to do it multiple times a day. I've had those days where I'm like, Lord God, you know what I mean? Because I know things ain't right. I know that my heart's not right. I know things have affected me. And no matter, even if I pray, man, I know the enemy's coming at me. I know the attack's on. we got to ask him to search our hearts, right? we got to examine our motives. we got to examine our walk. we got to examine our desires. Amen. Right? To make sure they're lined up with what God has for us. We ask the Lord to reveal to us our faults. And when he reveals them to us, we deal with them immediately. Immediately. The moment that God reveals to you that you are in sin, uh, or this or that, you deal with it immediately. And that keeps your hearts free and holy and sin-free, right? To the best of our ability, that's our responsibility. To deal with that stuff in our life, to keep our heart pure. And in doing that, the Lord will keep us on the right path. He tells us in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean yeah. not on your own understanding. Right. In all your ways, submit to Him or acknowledge Him. And He will make your path straight. That's right. right? But you've got to trust in the Lord. And if you're going to trust in the Lord, then you're going to do what His Word says. You're going to pray. You're going to try to be holy. You're going to do what His Word says. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. It means that you're all in. Right? With your heart. Right? See, we, we, a lot of times we get our heart broken, man. We get, a, we get all in in some other relationship and our heart gets all jacked up, right? Mm -hmm. We need to be all in with our heart with the Lord. He's not going to break your heart. That's right. You're not going to regret being all in uh, with the Lord with your heart. You're not going to regret it, right? He'll direct your path straight. Some of us are just a little off the path. We're just not quite on that straight path with the Lord. Because we just don't trust them the way that we should. We don't trust them with our finances. We don't trust them with this. We don't trust them with that. Yeah, Lord, your word says to do it this way. But, Lord, I think if I do it this way, it'll happen a little quicker. I think if I do it this way, Lord God, it'll be easier for me. I know your word says one way, but I think if I do it this way, it'd just be better. Well, that's not the way we should do it. We take those shortcuts and we get off this path. And without self-examination, all of us, are a few bad decisions away from falling away from the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Each and every one of us in here, starting right here, are probably a couple bad decisions, one, two, three bad decisions away from falling away. We all know that person who fell away, right? We all know the story of the prodigal, right? Fall, he fell away, but he came to his senses, right? And some of you in here tonight have fallen away, because I know some of you personally, and you're here tonight, that means you've come to your senses, right? Which is a great thing. There, there's no bad time to come back to the Lord. Brothers come back. Brothers come back. Brothers come back. Right? There's no bad time to come back to the Lord. Amen. He's always there waiting. Right? With, with his arms open wide. Isaiah 29, 13. The Lord says, These people come near to me with their mouths. And honor me with their lips. But their hearts are far from me. They worship me based on merely human rules they have been taught. See, they know what to say. They come to me with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but their hearts. So it doesn't matter how you act in church and what you say around people and all that other stuff. God knows your heart. And I would ask you tonight, is your heart far from the Lord? <coughs> I want you to be thinking about this tonight. Are you serving God just with your lips? Right? But the cool thing about it is tonight, if God has convicted somebody in here, or maybe someone watching, or someone that's going to watch this later, 
Restoration is available, man. Amen. We serve a loving God. And if we're sitting here tonight, the Lord's convicted us, man, my heart ain't where it needs to be. Man, I'm not seeking to be righteous. I'm not seeking to be holy. I don't have a craving for your word. I don't really care about the church. Right? I'm not much into examining myself, Lord. But we could change that tonight. Joel tells us in 2.12. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart. With fasting and weeping and mourning, rend your heart, not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. And he relents from sin and calamity. God's calling some of you tonight, possibly, to, be, to return to him. And he's saying there, return to me with all your heart. Some of us tonight might have strayed. Might have let our heart get calloused. Might have had our mind on earthly things. Might not have examined yourself too much lately, right? But Deuteronomy 4.29 says, But if from there, listen closely, But if from there you seek the Lord your God, you will find Him if you seek Him with all your heart and all your soul. But from there, he said, right? But from there, wherever you are. But from there, if you're in a backseat condition, if your heart hasn't been right, but from there. If something else is going on, but from there. Wherever you are with the Lord. But from right there where you are, he's saying right there. But from there. doesn't matter how far you've fallen away. But from there, seek him. Wherever you may be in your walk with the Lord. But from right there, seek him. And ask him to create in me a clean heart, O oh God. And he'll do it for you right now. He'll do it for you right this moment. You don't have to go another minute with your heart separated from God. He's waiting and he'll restore you. You have not because you ask not. But from there. Amen. 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 We're going to thank those tonight. Sam, you want to get that for tuning in. Peace out. We'll see you on Sunday. We're going to ask the rest of you to stand. I'll be up here to pray for.